I'm Mary Ng, the Minister of Small Business, Export Promotion and International Trade. Well, COVID-19 really has, uh, you know, has been very, very difficult for our Canadian businesses, in particular, our small and medium-sized businesses are small businesses. And I would say that uh, the challenges that I've heard from them is how do I keep my staff? How do I keep my business going? How do I get the operating funds to keep my business going and to operate? And how can I keep my costs low? And how do I just manage through this very difficult period? We're uncertain about how long it might take. So what kind of supports can I count on? So that I can so that I can manage my business and that we can then get ourselves beyond COVID-19 and get ourselves back on track, participating again uh, fully after we've been able to, you know, once we've once we've gone over COVID-19. The measures that we have put out really are about people first because they need to be. We're asking Canadians to do some really extraordinary things to plank the curve, to beat COVID-19. Um, and that's having an impact on people's lives. We're all doing things differently, and um, and it's having an impact on Canadian businesses, on the Canadian economy. So it had to be about people first. So the measures that we put out, really, the very first ones were always going to be about people first so that we can help support people, so that people aren't thinking about, how am I going to put food on the table? How am I going to make sure I have a roof over my head? How am I going to look after my family? How do I make my business continue to look after the people who I employ, who are a lot of times, you're right, they're so close knit, particularly in small businesses, they are almost like an extension of your family because you spend so much time working together. How do I make sure that as a business owner or a business leader, that I'm making sure that my team is also looked after? That is the very essence of what we are needing to do to make sure that the recovery, when that time, when it is right based on the public health officials, when they tell us, when the experts tell us, we need to make sure that we are supporting people in all of this. best way to describe it is what businesses have told to me what they need and the way our measures work is one let's um let's help you keep your employees number two let's help you with the operating funds that you need to weather through this very difficult period number three let's help you keep your costs low number four for those who are self-employed contractors or entrepreneurs making sure that they aren't left behind either. So on number one, which is the wage subsidy, it's a 75% wage subsidy to businesses because we know businesses have seen a significant decrease in their revenue. Some businesses, for example, are not seeing a decrease in revenue and they haven't had to lay people off or even had to make that difficult choice. But at the same time, I know businesses, you and I both know, and every community you go to around this country and all the businesses I've talked to, we know businesses that have absolutely experienced a significant decline in their revenue and therefore they're making a decision. Am I going to be able to pay my employees? So that's why there's a wage subsidy. That's why it's 75% is to help employers make the decision to not lay someone off because they know that the government will pay 75% percent up to 58,700 and uh, and if you have already laid people off cuz you had to make that tough choice i know employers who already are deciding you know what i'm going to rehire those employees back and the wage subsidy also covers that so that's number 1 helping companies keep their employees together because other than the practical spreadsheet if you will of keeping your employers the employee and employees together there's also a social element as well right a wellness factor as well of keeping the team together. So that's really important. Number two, helping businesses get the necessary funds to operate, to weather them through this period. So for small businesses, access to a $40,000 interest-free loan where 25% or $10,000 is forgivable if you're able to pay that back in two and a half years time. So in December of 2022, but $40,000 interest-free available at your financial institution. So go to your bank, Go to your credit union. That's that's who we have worked with because we that network is all across the country in every community. So making sure that businesses have access to that. And then for businesses that need more than $40,000 of that lending support during this period, the loans go all the way up to $6.25 million. Of course, those ones, um, the interest-free one is the $40,000. But there's a range of support that's there to help 
businesses manage their operating funds because we know they have to pay the rent. We know that they have to pay the salaries, like of the salary, the top up that they're going to want, that they're going to need to pay. Um, they need to pay just the regular operating, the bills every single month. So that's what we've done through unleashing billions of dollars of support into the lending system, into liquidity, into the Canadian lending system. And then number three, keeping costs low. So businesses remit GST, HST, customs duty to the to the federal government. We said, don't do that for the next three months. So it's a deferral for the next three months so that they can have that money in their pocket as opposed to sending us a check. And what does that amount to in the nationally? It's equivalent to a $30 billion interest-free loan to Canadian businesses just by deferring the GST and HST and customs duties and also deferring payment on filing your income tax and deferring those payments. So all of these measures are there to help our Canadian businesses. And the last one is the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, um, which is, you know, CERB, which is now known. The portal opened uh, on Monday. People are getting access to it. And this is $2,000 a month for the independent contractor who otherwise wouldn't qualify, but saw their income completely um, decrease. And you heard the Prime Minister say that we had to make some adjustments to that. Because we're also hearing that, uh, you know, that some people will, you know, their their income has, has decreased all the way, but not completely depleted, right? And, uh, and that some people also need some additional help. So we're a government that in this period, we're getting things out, but we're also adjusting along the way because we're listening to people, we're listening to businesses. Um, and we're going to keep doing the work, the work. In my view, the work is not done. We need to just keep doing this until we can help everybody weather the storm. We are in unprecedented times, as you said, and uh, and the future is going to be guided by our experts in health because job one right now is to plank the curve in Canada and to make sure that Canadians stay healthy and that they stay safe. That job has to be job one. And as far as businesses go, it's really incredible to see how businesses have stepped up. Look at our incredible manufacturers all across the country and those businesses all across the country. These are Canadian businesses that have risen to the challenge because we asked, because they're serving Canadians. Like this is just so incredible. So whether it is retooling their manufacturing shop to be able to make ventilators or to make, um, you know, PPEs, you know, protective uh, uh, equipment or to make masks. I mean, these are Canadian enterprises stepping up and doing that. And that's really, really incredible. And, uh, and you know, and during this time, we need to make sure that we are making sure that our high growth businesses, our small businesses, which are some of the most innovative in the country, they are supported through this because we need them uh, to continue. We need them in our recovery because they are all around our community and they are the engines of our, of our economic growth. We also need to make sure that our inclusive growth continues to, um, continues to be supported during this very difficult time. So I'm talking about women entrepreneurs. I'm talking about young entrepreneurs. I'm talking about new growth entrepreneurs. I'm talking about indigenous businesses. So making sure that the inclusive growth that we have all worked so hard to make sure that they are in the economy because they're contributing and they're going to contribute to the growth that they are supported during this time. And then I think the last thing I would say is last week I had um, a meeting with my G20 trade ministers uh, you know, globally. And we all committed that uh, to, you know, we all committed that during this period, we need to ensure that the supply chains for critical medical applies, uh, supplies for um, key agricultural, you know, key essential goods and services, agricultural products, that those supply chains maintain open and that we all as a G7 in our G7 countries, but indeed globally, commit to making sure that we keep those supply chains open because remember, you know, Canada is a trading country and uh, and we're doing some incredible things around made in Canada, but we also have to keep our eyes, um, you know, we need to keep our eyes to what the future will be as well and to make sure that in this time, it's about weathering and supporting our businesses through COVID-19 and beyond this to help through that recovery.
if I take anything away from this, it's how important it is for us to continuously always work together with our businesses. The measures that you're seeing today from the government of Canada, they come directly from people. They come directly from those businesses who, you know, who I get the privilege of working with and talking to. We created a partnership with um, the Canadian Chamber of Commerce so that in their national network, they are also supporting businesses and members in their network. I'm going to continue that work of listening to businesses because in the conversations I'm having with businesses, they are also looking at how they are able to, in this period, um, respond to their customers, how they might need to pivot. So the key right now for us is making sure that we are supporting businesses through this very tough period so that our businesses remain intact, like with their employees, having the cash flow that they need. And, uh, and, and I'm going to keep listening to businesses because I think businesses and entrepreneurs, there's something, you know, this we know for sure, that they are solution makers, that they are the ones who, you know, who with their ideas and with their innovation, with their ingenuity, with their, you know, go get it attitude, um, they're, they're going to come up with those solutions as well. And I think for government, um, we need to keep doing what we are doing, which is listening, which is working together, which is collaborating, which is finding ways to uh, to adapt and change, which, you, which you're seeing the government do. The measures we've put out, we've had to do them very quickly to make sure that people understood what we were going to do, but also to work along the way so that we can adapt and make the necessary changes as we hear from people. You know, I'm not different than so many Canadians who've had to adapt uh, to the way that we are working. So, you know, as a cabinet minister, we have uh, cabinet meetings that are hosted by the prime minister and uh, and I do those from home. There's a, you know, I have a secure line here. We do that from home. I also sit on um, the COVID-19 committee that's chaired by the deputy prime minister. I do that from home. Uh, you heard me. I had the G20 uh, meeting with uh, international trade ministers. I did that through a video, video conferencing feature. Um, I meet with my teams. You and I are, you know, are having this, uh, you know, this uh, session, which normally we would do with, you know, with an audience as an example. I do media, I do live media, I do radio media, I do telephone, you know, I do social media. So we're doing it and just creating these, uh, these tools and we're adapting. We're adapting and, uh, and I guess my advice would be this, you know, stay informed. I mean, the Prime Minister every day, every day walks out of those steps to give Canadians an update, as do the health ministers, as do the leaders in each of our provinces and, uh, and you know, in local communities. So I think staying updated just helps us sort of stay abreast of what is going on. Um, I would also say that as the business minister, um, find ways to support your businesses, because I know a lot of the businesses are also looking at different ways of being able to continue to uh, do business in their local communities. So some of them I know are, you know, are, are creating sort of their services through online platforms that they never used to. So I think that uh, support Canadian businesses, I think that's the other thing that I would love Canadians and see Canadians do. And everyone is doing it. You might actually get online and uh, be supporting someone on the East Coast or on the West Coast. So I would say support Support our Canadian businesses and support our Canadian healthcare workers, our frontline workers, our essential workers. I think that goes without saying. We are all doing that. And uh, and I think the very last thing, nothing, nothing is like picking up the phone. You know, your friends, your family, if they're all by themselves, um, and for someone like me, I mean, I have a busy schedule, so I'm not wondering what do I do day to day. Um, my schedule is, if you can believe it, just as busy, in fact, busier. Um but I pick up the phone or I send an email. Sometimes emails are good, but sometimes, you know what, just picking up the phone. Not everyone will have access to, you know, to Skype or to, you know, to, you know, to these online uh, platforms that we, uh, that you and I are using today. So the good old phone works, right? Just pick it up and, uh, and give someone a shout and say, hello, just checking out on you and seeing how you're doing. So I think, I think all those things gives you both the, uh, the balance of adjusting to working, um, and, uh, and, you know, and also being able to stay connected, even though we're not physically connected, a way to be able to stay connected with your fellow Canadians and your family and your friends. I'm Mary Ng, and this is my future economy.